Hi everyone and welcome back to the 15th tutorial in our Python 3.6 series. In this video we're going to be talking about documentation strings and function annotations. I'm going to lump them together because they're pretty simple. First thing I'm going to do on the documentation strings is just kind of talk about comments because I don't think we've touched on those yet. So what you want to do on a comment is you choose just put the hash symbol pound symbol whatever you want to call it and you can do whatever you want after this and it's not gonna print any code so like you could do print high and then if I do F5 and run this it doesn't do anything it doesn't print anything out because it's got the hash symbol so what if you have like a lot of lines that you want to comment out well, what you can actually use is the triple quotes. And then you can do something like And I'm going to just take this And you can see that it's colored in green which shows that it's been blocked by the annotation or the triple quotes which is a multi-line comment you do a multi-line comment with the triple quotes and you do a single one with the hash symbol and so what documentation strings are is when you want to kind of explain what something does it's generally good practice to have some documentation so you might want to say um, this function passes such and such variable over to some other function or does something then passes to something else and so you'll do something like this multi-line comment within the function just to start it off so that someone else who's reading your code can look at it and just read it and see oh this is doing that and this other thing is doing that and so what we can do with this right here it's printing my function dot double underline doc or double underscore and then you'll see what it does now it actually takes all of the stuff out of the double quotes or the triple quotes and it prints it out so if you're looking specifically for some documentation you could potentially um, change their code and make it print out like that I've never personally had to do that but it's just a feature I thought I'd share and then the next thing we're going to talk about is function annotations and so I'm just going to copy and paste this and then explain it afterwards so we can see this is kind of a normal function like we're used to we define it as F that's its name and then we're giving it some arguments and we're saying ham is going to be a string this is the new part. You use colon and then string and you define what the input is going to be. And so we look at the second argument and it's eggs and it's going to be a string and its default value is going to be eggs. And then we see this this print statement right here. It's going to print out annotations and then the annotations of the function f which is the function we're using right now. So that's going to print out the annotation part, which is the string, string equals eggs. And then after that, it's going to print arguments. And then it's going to print out the variable ham that's passed through and the variable eggs. And so we can try calling this and printing it. So we'll pass in spam close off the print and then we can see what that'll do 
And so we see that it print it printed out the annotations, the annotations, and then it did ham and it told us it was a string and eggs and told us it was a string. And then we see that it's also going to return the class string. And we see that here. This this arrow is saying what it's going to return. And then we can also see that it printed out spam, which got passed through to ham. And then we didn't pass anything for eggs, so eggs continued to be eggs. And then when we print what it returned, it just printed out spam and eggs. So that's going to be it on function annotations. And then just as a little note, um, they also mention at the end here the PEP8 style guide. And I'm just going to kind of run through that really fast. So the style guide is basically something that it's, it's the recommended way to write your code and to structure it. It's how you add your spaces what kind of formatting you do just to have similar syntax to everyone else so it's consistent. So what they mention is using four spaces instead of indents or four spaces instead of tabs. So like what we did right here is we used actually I copied and pasted that never mind. Um, but basically you have the option here you can use one two three four spaces or you can use a tab and it's going to function exactly the same they recommend using spaces i there's plenty of if you use sublime or any of those they can they can swap spaces and tabs on the fly so it's not really a huge deal but it is something that you kind of want to be conscious of is if other people are using spaces and you're using tabs then it can kind of screw things up or if you're switching between different editors and they're interpreting one tab as eight spaces or something like that then it'll screw up the formatting next thing they mention is to wrap the lines so that they don't exceed 79 characters it says this helps users with small displays this makes it so that if we have something like I'm trying to think what we could do here. Just if we have something, if we have some line that goes like off the screen, like we've had sometimes in the past, you can often do certain things to make it so that like you could go like that and then it all fits. So if you have something past 79 characters, they want you to break it up so that it can fit on a 79 character wide screen. And then after that, they mention blank lines to separate functions and classes and larger blocks of code inside functions. We haven't really m mentioned classes much, but we have mentioned functions. And so that's just saying if we had multiple functions. So if we had something like that, if we had some other function, let's call that D then we want it separated by just an empty line because that makes it much more readable. And then it says put comments on a line of their own. So that's saying w the way we did it earlier is we had this one that said print hi. And so that's commented out, but you can also do something where you go like that. And you can say print high and the comment after still says print high, but it doesn't do anything. They seem to generally not recommend that. I don't really, I've seen that frequently and even like code from Google and stuff. So I don't think that's a huge deal, but it is generally probably better to put this. If you're describing something, you can just put it the line above and then it makes it more clear what's what's a comment and what's actual functional code. They mentioned using doc strings. I think that's fair. You just put in the triple quotes, you explain what it does. Um, use spaces around operators and after commas, but not directly inside bracketing constructs. So like 
the way we have it here, how we don't have a space there, but if we were doing, let's say we were doing print one plus two, you want the space in between the one and the plus and the plus and the two. It just keeps it consistent. And then the next thing they mention is naming classes and functions consistently. So if you guys aren't familiar with camel case, camel case is basically you um, you capitalize the first letter of each word when you're making function names. So if this was like, I don't know what to call this. Um, let's call it cool function. So you just do it like that and you capitalize C, you capitalize F, and it's just the convention. And then um, actually, sorry, they want you to they, they want you to camel case classes and then do all lowercase with underscores for these. So we would do this one cool underscore function. And that's how you do that. And then they also mentioned some encoding stuff, but we haven't really touched on that yet. So I'm going to skip over that. 